Hi everybody, welcome to my 14th beam video. In this problem, I'm going to be solving the question you see here, and I'm going to find the location of the maximum shear stress and its actual value. If you want to know something else about beams, feel free to check out any of my other beam videos. If we want to find tau max, or the shear stress, we need to use this equation here. All right, that's the equation that we've seen previously. If we want to find the shear max, means we need to find V max, Q max, over I, that's the same for our cross section, times B minimum. All right, because the smaller this is, the bigger this whole value becomes. All right, so now let's just go ahead and solve for each one of these four variables. We'll start off with V. All right, now internal shear stress, that's what V is. We can expose that by making a cut at an arbitrary point along the beam. Now I'll choose to do this this way, do it this way. In this case, we only need one cut because no matter where we make this cut, we can describe that piece that's cut out by the same set of equations. Let's get a free body diagram of that cut and a free body diagram of the overall. All right, there we go. So we need the overall reaction first to find out what this reaction is so we can develop this equation. So since this beam is symmetrical, all right, in other words, like no matter how you look at it, like you can flip it around, it's always symmetrical, these reactions are gonna be the same, all right? You could take them to be different and you could do moments and you'd find that they'd be the same, but I'm just assuming that we can just, you know, know that. Now what's this force doing here? That's not an original one. What I've done is I've just collapsed this whole distributed load into one load, in which the magnitude is just going to be you know, the applied load times the length. Now, I haven't told you the length. I'll tell you it now. It's 2 meters. Okay? So this bit here is just going to be 20 kilonewtons per meter times 2 meters. All right, so if we sum up, Or we can say okay all right now moving on to this piece here we're gonna go through the same thing what is the magnitude of this force well, we've made a cut at a distance X away from the base so the magnitude of the force here is simply gonna be 20 kilonewtons per meter times that amount of distance X this here is going to be blue 20 X so then we can say <clears throat> 
All right, there we go. Now, this is via any point along the, the beam. So in order to find the maximum, it's always helpful just to make a sketch. So in this case, you could probably figure it out without a sketch, but in more complicated examples, make a sketch of your shear force, then find a the maximum. All right, so this is two meters. So when x is zero, we have 20 kilonewtons. Our x is two, we have a negative 20 kilonewtons. And it's linear, so we connect the lines. Passes through at zero when x equals zero. All right, now, what is the maximum shear stress and what is its location? Well, if you notice, we have 20 here and 20 here, or well, negative 20 here, all right? So both of these places, in terms of magnitude, have the same maximum shear stress. So the location where the shear stress is maximum is at the very beginning and the end of the beam. It's not always going to be that way, of course, because if you have a beam with a different loading, you might have the maximum here at one single point. It's not always at the end. So we can say the magnitude of this V max is equal to 20, positive 20 kilonewtons and it acts at x equals 0 and 2 meters. Alright, so let's move along. So we found the one part of this piece equa equation here. We got V, so we need Q and I and V yet. So let's go into finding Q. In our particular case, we're gonna max we're gonna try to maximize Q. So we'll draw in the cross section again. All right, there we go. And this, of course, here's the neutral axis. And we're gonna measure Y. We start off with this axis. So, if we recall the definition of Q from a previous video, it's the distance to the centroid times the area of that piece. So if we wanna find Q max, we need to maximize these two. So, taking Y measured from the neutral axis, we need to measure to a centroid of a piece. So we could put Y like pretty big and bring it all the way like pretty well near to the top. But that would have to be to the centroid of that piece and the centroid of that piece would be really small. Or the area of the piece that the centroid that you'd have would be really small. So we can't just make Y as big as possible. We can make A as big as possible by taking it, you know, taking the area of the whole thing. All right, but then Y would be zero because the distance to the centroid would be zero. So we're going to take the happy medium and go right here. All right, and it turns out for any square section, that's where it's maximized. So Q max is equal to the centroid, and this is half of this distance. So it's going to be 0 point. All right, so half this distance up, and then the centroid of this piece, we need to find the area of that piece. So that's just going to be this upper area. Alright, so the area that we're talking about has to be the area that is described by this centroid here. So we can't take the area of the whole piece. I'm only taking the area of the piece where we said the centroid was in. Okay, so the area of this little piece here then is and then, of course, just times this bit here. All right, so this is the second piece of the puzzle. Let's move on. We still have a few more variables. You got V, Q, I is next. That's the moment of inertia. Now the moment of inertia, that's of the whole cross section. It's not just of this top piece here. It's of the whole cross section. And we know that I equals two. And 
And so we're just going to go ahead and plug in the values for this situation. All right, so there's one more piece of the puzzle left, that's B. All right, so B, minimum, that's what we want. But B is just this width here, and the width is constant. So the minimum B, well, that's just going to be B. There's no specific point where it's bigger or smaller. All right. So now we have all the pieces of the puzzle. We found V, Q, I, and D. Let's plug in and solve for our shear stress. All right, there you have it. That's our maximum shear stress in this beam. So there is sort of an easier way, if you will, to do this. You can express each one of these variables in terms of B and H. You'll find then that tau is just equal to 3 halves V by A. All right, but I wouldn't recommend just to use this equation, all right, because the professors, when I did it, didn't like that. All right, it's a good way to check, and you can check this answer. It's 3 halves V by A. But professors like you to go through and find the whole thing, so it's, it's just a good practice to do that. So a quick review of what we did here. Find the shear stress max. We realized we had to maximize these two variables and minimize this one. Went through. We found V. We plotted it to find the location and magnitude of the V max. And then we went through, solved for Q, I and plugged in and got the value. And of course we're asked to find tau max and its location. So we found tau max and its location is going to be here at 0 and 2. Alright, so hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you out. And I'll see you in my next beam video.